The brand new Sigma 70-200mm f2.8 is here and it's packed with a lot of exciting things. And in this video we'll not only be taking a closer look at it, but we'll also answer questions such as how good is it actually in real life situations and is it really worth your money? On top of that, I'll also be sharing with you guys two things that I think are absolutely fantastic about it. And then there's one thing that I don't really like. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly if this lens right here is the perfect lens for you. So this is actually not a Sigma Art lens, but a Sigma Sport lens. And for the last three days, I've been playing around with it. And in my opinion, it's surprisingly good. And you know, it's been really fun to use it and put it to the test for both photos and videos. However, I might have a few comments about it uh, regarding all of that. But before we dive into just that, then my friends, let's first take a look at the build quality and what this lens actually has to offer. So as you can see, this lens, it's quite big. It's actually 1,340 grams, what it is in American terms, I'm not sure, but I'll put it on the screen. But overall, a fantastic and a well-built design that's weather shield and really sturdy. I, <laughs> this is, I, I have not dropped it, so don't take my word for it. I'm not going to drop it because it's not mine, Sigma lent it to me. Now as you can see, it of course sports Sigma signature, matte black look that pairs really really well with my Sony camera and I think the entire look it looks just super slick and I mean beautiful at least in my opinion now you have a aperture ring right here that uh, like feels really good and a focus ring here that also feel good and then the new thing if we take this a little bit up just like so we take this lens with sorry about this you know and then up here you have a zoom ring and this is actually the new thing about this camera and it also feels good I mean the entire feeling of this lens feels quality. Then if you take a look at down here, you have a bunch of these knobs, you have, can take off the clicking of the aperture ring, so if you're filming and you don't want to have this beautiful sound, this sound, that I do appreciate, but when you're filming, we don't like that, so you can take that off. You have some custom modes that you can put on here. You have the OS, the stabilizer, you can take it on and off. You have focus limiter, and of course, switching between autofocus and manual focus. Then you also have this thing. I'm not sure even what this is called, but this is for when you have it on the tripod. And the, it turns 180 degrees, but there is one thing that I think is super nice here, is that it clicks when it turns 90 degrees. So when you have it on the tripod and you want to switch your camera to, you know, horizontal or vertical, it's very easy because it clicks there, bam, bam. It's a nice little detail. However, you cannot take this thing off easily, which personally I think is pretty lame. You need like screwdrivers if you want to take it on and off. On the Sony, you have this quick release system, which is nice because then it, like if you want to fit it in the bag and you don't really always need this in a unit, then you can just easily take it off. Now the rear, it looks like this here. And then we have this lens hood that uh, you screw off like this. The lens hood then is, has a rubber here, so when you put it on the table or whatever, it's not uh, you're not you know scratching the plastic. Now, in my opinion, I'm not a huge fan of this. <laughs> Actually, then I'm not a fan of that screwing system at all. I think it's slow and clunky, and uh, yeah, it just takes a whole lot of time. Now, I get that this is just a personal preference, and I did ask Sigma about it, and they said that this is like a more durable system than what you have on like regulars like this. However, this has never break broken for me, and yeah, <laughs> again, just a point of preference, but this is my opinion. But as I said before, then I've been playing a lot around with this lens for both photos and videos, and I am surprisingly impressed. So if we start with the photos, then the images turn out really sharp, even at f2.8. And my friends, you can get some serious Pokeballs. 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 We like Pokeballs. And Pokeballs, if you're a 90s baby like me. Now, personally, I'm not that much of a portrait photographer, but I did ask my friend Brandon to pose for me, and the images, as you can see here, they turned out pretty great. So, like, if I were a portrait photographer, this is a great lens for that. I mean, the 70 to 200 millimeter, it's good. It's nice for portraits. Now we get a little uh, Patrick coming in. Now, where were we? Now, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that this lens right here, this is actually a prototype. And the like final result, when they release it, it will have some updated firmwares or anything like that. So. Uh, Sigma specifically told me, remember this is a prototype, if there is any wrongness, it will be fixed. But up until this point, I personally haven't found anything that I think is, or, or have I? Maybe, let's see. So the chromatic aberration, I have no idea how to pronounce that word, aberration, but the like color fringes, it's really well controlled. I am not really seeing a lot. I tried it shooting, you know, tree branches, which usually is like, where I, in my opinion, at least for me, where the cameras have the hardest time, you know, with that. 
and I'm zooming in. This is a totally unedited photo, and I'm like, I don't know, are, are you seeing it? I'm not really seeing a whole lot of it, so... Uh, very well controlled and good job there, Sigma. Another thing that the photos I've been showing you, these are mostly like pretty high ISO, like 1000 plus. The reason for it is been like pretty dark and <laughs> like dull days. So I had to like, because uh, I'm shooting handheld a lot, uh, then I had to like pump up the ISO a little bit. Another thing I was looking for is to see if there are any vignetting and uh, I'm personally not seeing any like vignetting <laughs> at all. How are you? Let me know in the comments down below. But I did, however, do a little test where I saw a tiny bit of vignette and you can see the difference when you go down to 2.8 in this scenario here there's a little bit of vignette compared to f4 or like the higher f stops but this is totally normal and yeah it's not that noticeable and to my eye it's also pretty sharp across the entire image sometimes when you have lenses they can be like more sharp in the middle or whatever but here is like pretty even sharpness <laughs> even sharpness smack the like button for me while i have your attention I did also take it out to the streets and had a fantastic time. This is definitely my cup of tea when it comes to entertainment, taking photos. I wish I had more time with this lens. I wish I would be able to, you know, go to the mountains. But I do live in Stockholm, Sweden, and there are no mountains close by. And I'm not going to Iceland until next month to visit my friends and family there. But with that being said, street photography is also fun. And there are a lot of cool shots that I managed to get with the Sigma you know, that I'm holding right here, and you know, that this entire video is about, and the reason you clicked here. And on top of that, the autofocus is also fast and accurate. However, when I was in the forest and it was extremely quiet around me, I did hear a slight, you know, how do you explain this? A slight sound in it, like it was trying to catch focus or thinking like, a, it's not enough for, I don't think the microphone will pick it up. And when I was here in the studio or in the city, I didn't hear it at all. But when it was super quiet, then I did hear a slight sound. I just wanted to add that there. Now, this was all about photography. When it came to video, however, that's where things, you know, became in my opinion, really interesting. But first, before we dive into that little rabbit hole, then if you want to take your content to the next level fast, and I'm not joking here because I've personally experienced this myself, then what I'm about to show you now and tell you is 100% for you because this episode right here is sponsored by yours truly, myself. <laughs> so for the last year or so, my Notion template has changed the entire game for me when it comes to creating content and honestly revolutionized how I script my my videos. And not only that, it also allowed me to track my YouTube projects and so much more. So I can confidently say that this system, if used correctly, can 100% elevate your YouTube game as well. So if you want to take your YouTube scripting game to the very next level and your content game in general, then in the description down below there is a link and there's even a 15 minute long tutorial that comes with the template just to make sure, my friend, that you get the most out of it right away. So for the video quality, and by the way, I realized throughout this entire, you know, my own ad at read, I was holding the lens here, and it's a little bit heavy, you know, but I'm strong. You, you can use this as a little, you know, dumbbell. But uh, enough of this nonsense here. Where are my notes? Now, for video, it's been incredibly enjoyable to use. The, uh, like, image quality and the footage, it comes out sharp, as you can see here. You even get some uh, beautiful, like, Pokeballs. <laughs> we do like Pokeballs. And whenever I say Pokeballs, I just go to think Pokeballs. Gotta get them. One thing that I was personally like interested in seeing was like, do we need to hold the lens at the same time? Like one thing that I was personally like interested in seeing with this in, uh, camera was to see how good is the autofocus in the uh, you know, video aspect. And as you can see with the video I'm throwing up, it, it tracks me fast, it's accurate. I also wanted to see like when we switch the focus from one subject to the other, how is it like uh, handling that? Is, is, there, is it jittery or there's too much like focus breathing? And I think that it like turned out pretty good. There, there might be, it might be a little bit too fast at times, but I think this is also some settings that I can change within my camera. So I have absolutely no complaints there. And lately when I've been trying out like these third party lenses, especially from Sigma, then I think that the autofocus, like I'm not seeing a huge difference between the autofocus on them and on the native Sony lenses. I mean, they've, they've dialed it in good. I think like this autofocus was bad on third party Sigma lenses back in the day. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. But in my experience for the newest models that I've tried, they've all been like fantastic. Now, I was also trying to look for any type of distortions, both for photos and videos. And personally, I'm not really seeing anything. Here I'm looking for like 
vignetting, I'm looking for some like parallel distortion or, or like concussion distortions, some type of distortions. I'm looking for like if the if uneven sharpness or whatever, or if the Im images aren't sharp. And I I am not seeing anything, but I'm not nitpicking too much. I'm not <laughs> too much of a nerd, but what do you think? Like, feel free to let me know in the comments down below if, if I'm just here uh, like <laughs> saying some bullshit or if you actually can see anything that is, uh, isn't as good. Like we are here making this community together and uh, together we grow, you know. Now, when it comes to the price, then at the time of the recording, the price isn't uh, yet uh, available. I, I don't even know the price. But the beauty of editing is the fact that we can jump between space and time. So welcome to the future, my friend. And here, the price of the Sigma is $1,499. This is the price I'm seeing online and I think it's pretty damn good considering what you can get. I mean, the Sony, it's a lot more expensive and I just like want to again emphasize on the fact that I do think the Sigma is a fantastic lens. It's razor sharp and just it handled everything that threw at it like pretty damn good. However, what camera should you be using it with? And if you're a beginner, what camera should you use? Well, if you want to know the answer to that question, the next, you should watch this video right here.